<laughs> okay. How are we doing? Okay, fantastic. Right, so we've got two choices. We can either beat around the bush a bit or we can get straight to the meat. We're going to beat around the bush a bit. Okay, well, we can do that. Okay, so why am I here? Well, first of all, uh, I've been speaking for about 35 years, uh, 20 of them in employment with large insurance companies, sales presentations, seminars, that kind of stuff. 15 years on my own, uh, predominantly doing internet marketing, that kind of stuff. I founded a social networking site for financial services professionals. If you found a social networking site, you get asked to speak on social media. So I focus on financial services, regulated industries, I also do quite a bit in the automotive industry, and I have a niche of social media in Indian tourism as well, which is a really nice place to be. I use Twitter, LinkedIn extensively. Across two Twitter accounts, I've got about 16,000 followers. On LinkedIn, uh, I've got a couple of groups with about 30,000 uh, subscribers across the piece there. And on my social networking side, I've got about 11,000 financial advisors, so a real niche there. So I use speaking and the internet to get as much reach as I possibly can. So let's just have a, a, a real starting point. If we get nothing else, when we start talking about social media, a lot of people immediately think we're talking about sales and marketing. I think we've got to start looking at social media these days as very much it's part of your proposition. The speaking bit, the training bit, the seminars, the consult that's part of your proposition, but you now look at social media and what you communicate, that's part of your proposition as well. If you do that well, just as you would do a speech well, you'll get referrals. The great thing about online, you've got a significantly bigger audience. The retweet is the most powerful tool at our disposal. We've got to be doing as much stuff as we can to get people to be retweeting and sharing everything we do. Everything, your, your whole focus with social media must be to, in an ideal world, to generate emotion. The most powerful type of social media is stuff that gets people here or here and they go, I love that, and they click the like button. This is why cute puppies, kittens, and stuff like that works so well on Facebook. We cannot resist that kind of stuff. Have a think about what you speak about. Think about your area of expertise. You'll all have case studies around what you do. You'll all have stuff that is about real, real life, real stories. You want to try and get as much of that in as you can. So everything you need to be doing is to be looking for stuff that is shareable. You want to see examples of stuff that's shareable, just look at the Daily Mirror's website, the Daily Mail's website, a website like BuzzFeed. It's all designed to encourage you to share it on and spread it far and wide. Okay, so social media, it's part of what you do now. It's not just a marketing exercise. Okay, so have a look at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is incredibly powerful. I get about 90 to 95% of my new speaking work from LinkedIn, as much as that. But LinkedIn is a bit of software at the end of the day. It's a tool to help you communicate with other human beings. It's something we're all quite good at in this, uh, this particular conference, communicating with other human beings. We tend to look at social media as a bit like some shortcut, the tech will do the job. No, it won't. Social media is software that's powered by people. LinkedIn isn't a job site. LinkedIn is a communication tool. It is also a people search engine. We want to make sure that when people are searching for expertise that you guys come up the top. So hands up if you ever Googled someone before you met them for the first time, went for a meeting here, and what do you find? Not much. If you go onto LinkedIn, you find pretty well everything you'll need, you'll need to find. There's 16 million people in the UK who are using LinkedIn. 45% of them interact with the site in some way, shape or form every day. They may not actually visit the site, but they may get an email or they may share something that they've come through. So people are using this. If you work in a global market, there's about 330 million people worldwide that are using LinkedIn. So first thing we need to do, have a plan. Who's our target audience? Because your target audience is on LinkedIn. We just gotta find them and we gotta find a way to connect with them. First thing we need to do, get this profile nailed. Get it absolutely nailed. The one single big
biggest problem that people have with LinkedIn, and this is why they're not getting business from LinkedIn, because they haven't filled out a profile in detail. There's a nice little, there's a fishbowl thing that you see that shows how you must fill out your profile in detail. Then some magic happens when you do that, because LinkedIn rewards you for filling out your profile in detail. And the way it rewards you is to push you higher up the search results. So there's a no-brainer. Fill out your profile in detail, answer the questions that, it, that, the, that the system asks you along the top, and spend some serious time doing this. You must have a photo. The photo must be professionally taken. Not one taken by your kids on your iPhone at Christmas with a bag on your head or something like that. It's got to be friendly and professional, but ideally one that reflects your expertise. That may not necessarily be a picture of you speaking, but it might be something else, okay? A picture, friendly, professional, taken professionally, that reflects your expertise. Don't just have a photo, though, in the photo spot. You can now put photos all over your profile. Every one of the sections pretty well, you can upload photos, videos, PowerPoint presentations, spreadsheets, PDF files, you name it, upload it onto the site. Um, I know a couple of people who have created a PowerPoint presentation that sits on their LinkedIn profile that's only designed for viewers of their LinkedIn profile. It's the only place you can see it. It'll also be on SlideShare. Do you know SlideShare? Social networking site for PowerPoint presentations. LinkedIn owns SlideShare. So you put something on SlideShare, it appears on LinkedIn as well. But the reason for this is not everyone wants to read your beautiful prose in your profile. Some people would rather look at pictures. Some people would rather watch a video. Some people would rather watch a PowerPoint presentation. So mix up the media, but put m as many photos on there as you possibly can. Really, really important that you do that. Here's another little trick. We want to make sure that you get found for your expertise when people are using the search engine, okay? So LinkedIn's a search engine. It's also worth remembering Twitter's a search engine as well. YouTube is the second most popular search engine in the world. Uh, there's a whole generation now, 13 to 25 year olds predominantly, that uses YouTube as their search engine. When my daughter has got homework to do, maybe she's got some project on the Tudors or something like that, she wants to look up some information, she goes to YouTube before she goes anywhere else, okay? Really important we remember that. LinkedIn's a search engine. So you get a clean sheet of paper and you write on this sheet of paper about a dozen keywords that sum up what you're about, your expertise. We don't want a word like great service because no one types that into the, into the search box. So your area of expertise. So if you're an accountant that speaks, maybe you'll have words like tax, HMRC, stuff like that. Each and every one of you will have your own unique list of keywords. Write them on this sheet of paper, then put them in order of importance. I'll come to a second. Put them in order of importance. So the most important keywords are at the top of the list the least important but still important at the bottom of the list. Then take the top five keywords from your list and edit into edit in, it into every single section of your LinkedIn profile. Even the contact me section, edit it into every section. You could be lazy and just cut and paste your five keywords and do it that way. But ideally we want to weave some nice prose uh, into there that, that people can read. Guess what happens? When pe just doing that one thing alone of putting the keywords into your profile will make an immediate and a noticeable difference to your visibility in search results. So we've done two things that will make a big difference. One, we've filled out our profile. The second thing we've done is we've put keywords in there. Just, just do that alone and you'll be amazed the difference that it makes to doing that. Okay. Another uh, really important area that we tend to forget about is people by people, yeah? We know we all know that one, but we tend to buy people where we've got something in common with them. Um, so for example, if somebody from the stage this afternoon said, there's anybody here who's into running, okay? I guarantee you that come the coffee break, the runners will have sus picture and they'll gravitate towards each other. Anyone here like Manchester United? The Manchester United people rather sadly will gravitate towards each other, okay? People by people. Now there's a, there's a thing on LinkedIn where you can do that as well. You can find other people who've got interests in common with you. It's right down near the bottom of your profile. It's called the additional information section and you add in your interests. So what you want to put in is whatever your interests are. I'll put lots in, photography, yoga, writing, walking, red wine, vodka, whatever it is, whatever it is you're into, list them out in detail. Maybe get a couple of keywords in there as well, okay? List out your interests. Put a comma after each one of your interests. Then the magic happens. Once you put the comma after the word, the word becomes clickable. 
So maybe we click on the word photography that's in our profile. LinkedIn will then find everyone else on LinkedIn who's got photography on their profile. That's great. You've got something in common with these people. But what we want to find is people who are going to book us for consultancy work, speaking work, seminars. So you then put in the industry, type in the industry that, that you're interested in, type in the location, and it will filter it down accordingly. So, for example, I've got Ashtanga Yoga in my interests, okay? Particular type of yoga. I click on the word Ashtanga Yoga, LinkedIn finds everybody else on LinkedIn that's got yoga in their profile. The first page is dominated by yoga teachers. I know I'm not interested in yoga teachers. What I'm interested in is speaker bookers who do yoga. So I then go to the left-hand side, I type in the industry, which would be events services. I then put the location, London, and that list of 3,000 odd filters down to about eight people. I've now found eight people that will have a conversation with me when I approach them because we've got something in common. And I can either do the old fashioned thing and send them a letter, send them an email, send a connection request through LinkedIn, <laughs> but I will personalize that connection request. I will never, ever, ever send a connection request that hasn't been personalized. About 95% of people on LinkedIn never bother to personalize it. And you've had them, you don't, you get them every day. Please add me to your, I'd like to add you to my professional, uh, not interest, don't know who you are. But if it says something like, uh, oh, I see you do yoga, uh, something, something of interest, just start a dialogue. That's how relationships build here in the real world. Personalize, so find people where you've got something in common, find the industry that you want to find them in, even down to the location, and then get in touch with them in a very personal way to do that, okay? So that's a nice little trick to do that. Um, groups on LinkedIn. For some people, the groups are almost the, the very best bit. Uh, I found, for example, there's a group for everything, every occupation. There's a group, for example, for garage door professionals. So if your target market is garage door professionals, there's a group there for you, okay? There's a group for everyone. Um, that I, occasionally I love finding spoof LinkedIn accounts and I found one for Father Christmas um, last year and I thought I wonder if this guy has actually joined any groups and sure enough Father Christmas had joined the Wooden Toys group so there's a group that has got your target audience sitting there. Go join those groups. Don't go in there and start shouting your mouth off and say, I'm here, I'd love to work with you all. Do what you would do as if you're walking into a pub full of strangers, yeah? Don't start dishing out your business cards. Build dialogue, listen to what people have to say, maybe buy around, have a virtual coffee. If you see somebody's written something that you agree with, like it, comment on it, agree with it. Don't sell. If there's one, there's one thing about social media, the more you try and sell, the more you push people away. And it's this networking thing. Although we're connected to people quite loosely, we just still, in many ways, this is a little social network. This is our little gang now, isn't it? If someone wants to come barging into our gang, we're not going to be too happy about that. It's people that to get into our gang, they would have to be sociable, listen to what we have to say, touchy-feely. So go find the groups on LinkedIn. But once you're in LinkedIn, there's a button there that shows you all the members of a particular group, which is great. But there's also a search box. So you can search for particular types of people. Maybe it's CEOs. Maybe it's CFOs. Maybe it's HR people. So use the search box within the groups as well, and that will narrow down the field to people that you really want to look for. Okay, a couple of other things that are uh, really worth thinking about. Hands up if you've got a company page on LinkedIn. Company page on LinkedIn? Okay, hands up if you've got a showcase page on LinkedIn. Nobody, that's not it. Nobody knows showcase pages even exist, yet they're one of the most powerful things on LinkedIn. Guess what, you can have seven showcase pages. So you've got your company page on LinkedIn, which talks about stuff that you do in your business, but you can have a showcase page, and it says you can have seven of them, which just focuses on one particular product or service that you offer. So maybe you're doing some seminars on leadership around the UK or around the world. So you can have a showcase page that just talks about leadership, just talks about your seminar, just puts photos and videos about leadership. So you'll have a fewer number of members, but it's very, very focused. These are the people who are genuinely interested in, in what you have to say about that. So personal profile, company profile, showcase profile, times seven if you want to have seven showcase profiles. Really, really important. Okay, let's look at a couple of other things, just going outside LinkedIn for a moment. Um, in the early days, all uh, internet marketing people used to talk about was how to get uh, higher up the search results on Google. And we used to say, if you're not on Google, you don't exist. 
today we're now starting to say, you know, if you're not on Twitter, you don't exist. For a very, very important reason. Earlier this year, Google signed a deal with Twitter that tweets are going to start appearing in Google search results. Expert two minute warning. In real time. Now, um, this is amazing. It's just starting to be rolled out. This is because Google now realizes that when we go looking for stuff on Google, we tend to prefer, as human beings, recommendations from real people, not from some obscure website that might happen to have come out top of the search result. We're not quite sure. We've never heard of them. Do we like yeah, This is why TripAdvisor is so important, because the reviews are from real people. Twitter, in search results on Google, helps us to see what real people, hopefully, are actually saying. They've just literally in the last few weeks started to roll this out. If you do a Google search for your name, if you are already quite prominent uh, online, your latest tweets will appear in the third or fourth position on Google search results. So we need to be using. And if you are using Twitter, start developing your own unique hashtag that is unique to you. So when I, anything I do on uh, Twitter now, I put something about social media and then I add hashtag social media speaker. That's unique to me. So if you're a leadership speaker, you might currently be using hashtag leadership, which is fine, but maybe put leadership speaker or leadership expert or something that is unique to you and use it every single time if you possibly can. Okay? Um, again, look at Twitter. It's not just a communication tool, not just banging stuff out there. Have conversations. Make Twitter part of your speaking proposition. Okay? Please come find me on. Just one second. Come find me on on Twitter, and I can send you more stuff. Amazing. Okay.